Hi everyone, welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host David Tear, um, and this is my second uh, video on my sub-series on derivatives of calculus. And today I'm going to talk about the power rule. I'm going to derive a power rule, which is a very important uh, rule in differentiation, differential calculus. It says that the derivative of x to the nth power is equal to n times x to the n minus first power, where n is an arbitrary non-negative integer. So anyway, let's begin. So uh, yeah, so here's a little just a bit of more of an elaboration on the Powell rule. Um, and I should point out that there's two different types of notation for derivatives. Uh, one of them is due to Isaac Newton. He was uh, the first person to invent calculus. Uh, um, he was from England and he invented calculus. Uh, he called it fluxions. And it was part of his uh, um, physics, you know, his... Uh, his classical mechanics, which he um, published in the Principia. Um, and uh, so he used the prime notation, f prime of x. But then there was another um, very famous mathematician named Gottfried Leibniz. He was German, and he actually invented calculus about 10 years later, independently of Newton. But he had a different notation, which most people consider cons superior these days. He used df dx to represent the derivative of a function f uh, of x. So anyway, just be aware that there are these two different types of notation, and you'll probably see both of them um, in different contexts. So anyway, what does the power rule say? Well, it says that f prime of x, which we can also write as df dx, is equal to x times n to the x n minus first power, um, where x is uh, f of x is x to the n. So uh, I want to derive this uh, formula, which I call formula 1 here. And uh, the way we derive it, we first use a rule called uh, the binomial theorem. And I'm not going to prove this theorem. This is something you probably learned in high school at some point. Uh, it's a result from, from high school algebra. And uh, it's a very important result. I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to derive it. I'm going to state it, but I'm not going to derive it. So we're going to use a binomial theorem, and we're also going to use the, the definition of the derivative in, ter in terms of a limit to derive uh, this, the power rule. So anyway, let's continue. Um, so what does a binomial theorem say? Well, binomial theorem just says if we have a, a binomial, in other words, the sum of two terms, which is a plus b, if we raise that to a, a, a non-negative integer power n, a plus b um, to the nth power is equal to the sum. Uh, sum um, and this looks kind of ugly, but it's a, uh, it's a finite sum is the sum n choose k. These are binomial coefficients um, times uh, a to the uh, n minus k times b to the k. And like I said, you've probably seen this formula before. There's a lot of special cases of this formula. For instance, uh, when when uh, n is 2, you just get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. When a, n is 3, you get a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed, so on. Uh, another place you've seen these four, um, binomial coefficients probably is in Pascal's triangle. They're just the numbers in Pascal's triangle. But anyway, enough of that. Like I said, I'm not going to derive this formula. Uh, and there's a formula for the binomial coefficients, which I wrote down in equation 3. You can write it in terms of uh, factorials. n choose k is just n factorial divided by the quantity k factorial times n minus k quantity factorial. And uh, the, we really don't care about most of these coefficients for what we're doing today. We only care about the first two. It's enough to note that n choose 0 is 1. That's pretty easy to see. Uh, and also n choose 1 is n. That's all we really need. And then uh, for all the other higher order terms, what we note is that they all involve powers of b that are at least 2. And uh, as it turns out, that we can, we're, we're going to be able to ignore those terms, as you can see. So we don't really need them. So we can write, we can, we can kind of simplify the uh, binomial theorem with equation 4, just as a plus b to the nth power is a to the n plus n times a to the n minus 1 times b plus, and then I write this thing called big O. This is big O notation. Don't worry about this too much if you haven't seen it, but it's big O of b, b squared. What that really means is we can ignore all powers of b that are uh, um, less than b squared in this case. So we can ignore b. Uh, the, the result just uh, depends on powers of b that are at least 2. And if b is small, 
then it's going to go like b squared, which is even smaller than b. And b is actually going to be h. It's going to be the thing we're letting go to zero. So um, that's why I mentioned this. But anyway, let's let's just complete the proof. So here's the proof. Uh, so uh, I did a proof similar to this a few days ago. I did a case where, where the power was 2x squared. You might remember that proof. Um, but here I'm going to do in general where n is an arbitrary non-negative integer. So we just use, we start with the definition of a derivative as a limit. So we have f prime of x. The definition of that is just the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And now we plug in what f is. f of x is just x to the n. So then inside the limit, we get x plus h to the nth power minus x to the nth power all over h. And then now we can use the binomial theorem to uh, expand the uh, binomial on the left in the numerator. And then we just get x to the n plus n times x to the n minus 1 times h. And now I have this term O of h squared, which we're going to see we can ignore, minus x to the n all over h. And I think you'll notice now that the terms x to the n cancel. And when you cancel them, you just get in the numerator, you get n x to the n minus 1 times h plus O of h squared all over h. And so we can divide both the numerator and denominator by h. And when we do that, we get the limit as h goes to 0 of nx to the n. Uh, um, I think I made a mistake here. Um, yeah, this should be, yeah, no, I, did, I wrote it right. nx to the n minus 1 plus O of h. The h got canceled in the numerator. And it got canceled in the O of H squared. That just becomes an O of H. And so now O of H, as H goes to zero, the limit of O of H is going to be zero. Because remember, O of H just means that we can ignore every power of H less than the first power. So if everything's multi being multiplied by H, and since H is going to zero, that's going to go to zero. So we're left with just NX to the N minus one. And that's what we want. That's the proof. That's the proof that the derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1 for every non-negative integer n. Uh, and this is a very useful rule. This is going to simplify our life quite a bit uh, in the future. We won't have to be using the limit formula much longer for, for calculating derivatives. And we're going to derive a lot of other useful rules for differentiating other types of functions as well. So anyway, uh, that completes my video for today. Thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you guys next time.